Hi, this is Willie and thanks again for watching another one of my videos. Recently I did an unboxing and flight review of this quad and I was truly impressed with its features. In fact, I was so impressed that I knew there were several modifications that I wanted to perform. However, because of time restraints as well as I did not have all of the components that I needed, I was not able to show what I had in mind. This video will take you through three major upgrades that at its conclusion will turn this toy quadcopter into a hobby grade model that you will want to fly all the time. So let's just dive into the video. The three modifications that I want to share with you are line of sight modifications, FPV modifications, and HD video modification. And of course I'll give you some resources too. Let's talk about line of sight modifications. Because the X8HC is a toy quad, it does not offer GPS or return to home functions. Basically, it is a line of sight model, which means you have to constantly keep track of its orientation, whether it is close to you or far away. Now, this can be difficult even for a seasoned pilot because most quadcopters have a silhouette profile that is similar in shape about all four sides. So one of the first things that I do to all of my quadcopters is to paint the front of the model and its arms with a bright orange color. I have been amazed at how visible this color can be seen even when the model is at a great height. And many times it has helped me to regain orientation when I've lost it. In addition to having the front of the quad painted orange, I also suggest that you swap out the front legs with orange ones in order to gain another reference point that will help you recognize the front of the quad versus the back. The next line of sight modification concerns the use of color props to keep track of the model. I mentioned this modification in the original video that I posted on the X8HC, but I want to point it out again. Now since the front of the quad is painted orange, and that helps me to know the front from the back, I then prefer to add the same color props on each side of the model, green on the right and orange on the left, which gives me additional visual clues for turning orientation. Now the next line of sight item is new for me, and this is my first time trying it out on a toy grade quadcopter. What I've done is added a headlight. I've used this technique on many of my hobby grade models and finally I think I have discovered a light that can work with this size model. The light is listed on banggood.com as a Hubson product but actually it is a bicycle safety light. Now what I like about this light is that it is extremely light in weight. It has a USB rechargeable battery that's built in. There are four flash modes and it has a running time of 4 to 12 hours. Installing it on the model is as easy as slipping on the rubber band that comes with it. I suggest that the steady mode should be used for night flying and the slow flash for daytime flying. Let's take a look at this light. The final line of sight technique is a simple one and that is learn how to activate and perform the headless mode function for the quadcopter. In case you skipped over this section in the instruction manual, I've provided the two pages on the subject. But you really need to practice this function in real time because it can save you if you lose total orientation or if you are experiencing a total flyaway. And then to go to headless mode, press and hold the button, and you hear a continuous beep. To get out of headless mode, press the button and hold it again, and that puts you back into the uh, programming mode. The FPV 
ERP modification is the heart of this update and it's going to increase the value of your X8HC as well as open up additional fun and some new experiences while flying the model. In order to convert the quad to FPV quality, we only need three items. One, a micro camera. Two, a power source. And three, a monitor or goggles in order to fly FPV. Now I found a perfect micro FPV camera at banggood.com for $40 but immediately I ran into a problem for a power source because of the type battery connector that came with the camera. Basically the connector is for a one cell battery with the Pico connector and I knew right away that I would not be able to use a higher capacity battery. Fortunately while looking for a different type connector that I uh, could solder onto the battery lead I came across a spare battery that I had bought for my Mobius camera. Not only did it have the Pico connector, but it was rated at 820 milliamps, which was approximately six to eight times the normal capacity of a one cell Pico connector battery. Some of you may be interested in the specifications on the camera. So before I go into how to mount it and the battery to the quadcopter, you can take a look at that information here. I will also give you an idea of its quality too. As far as mounting the camera, I took the easy route by first of all applying a small piece of 3M double stick tape to the bottom of the camera. I found the perfect angle alignment by mounting the back of the camera at the top of the diamond shape on top of the model. Because the battery is going to need to be recharged from time to time, I placed Velcro on it and on the location that you see in the photograph. The final item to check out in the FPV modification session is a monitor that I used. I opted out for a standalone system to cut down on cost and the Esheen 5802S was an excellent purchase. First I will share with you its features. I will post the instruction manual and then I will list a description of its specifications. The only modification that I made to the monitor was to substitute one of the antennas for a fat shark clover antenna. Let's put everything to the test. As a professional photographer, I was really interested in what was the quality of the camera lens and its ability to handle highlight and shadow detail. Another factor too was how good is the video transmission to my FPV monitor. So the following footage is a quick test that will show you how impressive the modifications came through. The final upgrade that I made to the X8HC is so simple that all we have to do is remove the original camera and attach a higher quality one. Now I own both a Mobis and Runcam and it really doesn't matter which one you use for this modification. However, I have discovered that I personally prefer the Runcam's quality for my aerial photography. In order to attach the camera to the quad, the first item we need to make is an anti-vibration cradle. Now this is not my idea, but I have found that this particular item works extremely well. So click on the link and find out how to construct your own. Because of the weight of the camera, I use industrial strength Velcro on the model and on the cradle. But it might be a better idea to use a 3M tape for permanency. Also, because crashes happen and parts fly off, 
I further secured the camera to the front leg of the quad using very thin steel wire. It would be a shame to lose all of your video footage or still images because the camera separated from the model and you could not find it. Okay, that does it for all three modifications that I have performed. But to wrap things up, here are some quick flying tips. But don't think that I'm going to leave you wondering if all this works. So check out the sample footage taken from the quad. Although the X8HC is not hobby grade, by making these simple modifications you can take it to a new level. I think you'll be impressed. So enjoy and fly safely.